Last fall, I turned 16 and started my first job at a really small pizza place in my town. It was a family-owned shop with only five or six people working there. I only got the job because my best friend also worked there. I was the delivery driver though, and I only worked during the later hours since I had school during the day. It was around my third week on the job that this happened. The night was pretty regular. It was slow, both for deliveries and dining. It was slightly cold out too, which kept most people at home. Around 11 though, a call came in. My friend picked up the phone and put the order in. It was for a small pizza and a soda, so they quickly made it and I hit the road to deliver it. The address wasn't too far, just eight minutes away, but when I pulled onto the street, I immediately hit a pothole and realized that the whole street was cracked and full of potholes. It looked torn apart and completely uncared for. Our town wasn't exactly the nicest, but this was still far worse than most other places. I carefully drove down, avoiding any potholes I could see, until I made it to the address. It was a two-story wooden house. The house itself looked just as old and uncared for as the street, but strangely, the yard was full of fresh flowers and plants that clearly had been tended to. I parked at the bottom of the driveway and grabbed the pizza and soda, then walked up to the front door. The wooden steps to the porch felt like they were going to give out, and I got a weird sense of something unsettling. I glanced back at my car, seeing the dense woods behind it and realizing how isolated this place felt. I knocked on the door. Right after knocking, I could hear movement inside the house, and floorboards started creaking. It was soft though, like they were walking lightly and slowly, but I could hear the creaking get closer and closer to the other side of the door until they were right behind it. I prepared myself for them to open the door by smiling and holding out the pizza, but they never opened it. After 10 seconds, I started getting uncomfortable. Hello? I'm the pizza guy, just delivering your order. There was no response and no other sounds from inside. I could feel something off, so I backed up and walked off the porch. I was still a little hesitant about fully leaving without them paying though. I took one look back, and when I did, I physically felt my body shudder. There was a man standing by the side of the house, staring right at me, looking like he was walking toward me and I'd only just stopped once I saw him. He looked old and skinny, but had an eerie look in his eyes. I hurried back into my car, and the man didn't say a word and just watched me. I pulled out of there and drove back to the pizza shop. I didn't know what that was. My friend thought it might have been some kind of prank but that man looked like he was way too old to be pulling something like that. I'm just glad I left when I did, because I don't know what would have happened if that man made it to the porch before I got out. This was only a month ago. It was late September, and where I'm at, we were having a lot of rain. Pretty much every day, it was pouring down. I work as an outdoor security guard for a warehouse on the outskirts of the city, so rain doesn't exactly make my job any more enjoyable. Luckily, the company I work for lets me stay inside on rainy nights, but it always made the shift go by a lot slower. Instead of getting to roam around outside the building, I just had to stand by the glass entrance doors and watch for anything. Anyway, this night I got in at 9, locking up the place after all the employees left. It was pouring outside, so I stayed in and stood by the door, and honestly just tried to stay awake. There was nothing to see except rain and the occasional thunder and lightning. A few hours went by. During that time, I just leaned against the wall and made a few trips to the bathroom. But then, as I stood by the entrance doors, fighting to stay awake, there was a deep, creaking thud. 
It echoed through the whole warehouse. It sounded like bending metal, or maybe a heavy metal door scraping open. It was enough to make the hair stand up on the back of my neck. I was sure it was nothing, and just a creepy sound because of the circumstances. But it was kind of my job to check on these things, so I walked down the hallway and looked through each of the corridors. I'd never actually explored much of the warehouse, since I was usually outside. All I knew of was the one main hallway that had five or six corridors branching from it, leading to large open warehouse areas. I looked down each of these, until I got to the last one. At the end, the door was cracked open. I felt a chill run through me, although I still didn't know if it was already opened or not. I walked over and opened it further. The whole room was dark. Hello? My voice echoed through the otherwise silent warehouse. After a few seconds, I started to step back and close the door until I heard something in front of me. It was a voice. It sounded like a man, either mumbling or softly laughing somewhere in the darkness near the tall shelving units. Is someone there? What the hell are you doing here? I called out. Come here. He said something softly. What? Come here. He said a little louder. Still, I couldn't see anything at all. After a couple more seconds, I said fuck this and closed the door. I used my radio to contact the police and left the building through the front. Five minutes later, they showed up and walked through the building. They came out alone. Security tapes were reviewed, showing what looked like a 50-year-old man with a dark jacket slipping in through a gap in one of the back garages. From there, he made his way into the warehouse room, where I heard him in. And disturbingly, on the footage, it looked like he was holding some kind of knife. He made his exit soon after I left. We don't know why he broke in, or what exactly he was trying to do by telling me to come into the warehouse. It might sound weak of me, but I quit after that, and took up a day job instead. This happened two years ago. It was the end of October, which is usually when it starts snowing around here. I live in a small one-bedroom apartment with my dog, Milo. It isn't the best place, but it isn't the worst either. Most of my neighbors are quiet and keep to themselves, and being that the building was only two stories with eight rooms, it wasn't all that crowded. Anyway, this night I had gotten out of work at 6.30, I went home and took Milo out real quick, then made some dinner and sat at my desk to play some video games with my buddies. I stayed up a little later than I planned, but around 12 I finally got off. The sun had obviously set, and I hadn't gotten up at all during that time to turn on the lights in my apartment, so the whole place was dark aside from my computer screen. Feeling ready for bed though. I put the leash on Milo and went down to the back courtyard to let him do his business. It was really cold out and snow covered the ground. This courtyard was right behind the apartment building and just had a few lamps lighting up small areas of it. It was really quiet outside, but as I waited for Milo to sniff around, I looked up at the window to my apartment room. My blinds were only partially open but I could see the screen to my computer shining through the window. Then something moved. Suddenly I could now see more light coming through the blinds as if there was something blocking it a few seconds ago. I whispered what the fuck under my breath, completely caught off guard. I had to double check that I was looking at the right window to my apartment, but I knew I was. I mean I could literally see my computer. My mind started racing. Was someone standing behind the window and moved away once they saw me looking? 
It's really the only thing I could think of that would have moved like that. I tugged on Milo's leash and hurried back into the building and up to the second floor. I looked down the hallway and slowly moved toward my room while listening for any sounds. It's worth mentioning that I never lock the door when taking Milo out because I'd always only be gone for less than a minute. It still seemed really unlikely that anyone would have just walked into my room though. I opened the door. At first, everything seemed okay. The little doggy gate that I had by the door was still in the same position as it was when I left. I took a few steps inside. It was still dark, but the main room looked empty. I then turned and looked down the hallway leading to my bedroom. It was so dark that I couldn't even see the bedroom door at the end of the hallway. Honestly though, I was starting to second guess myself at this point. Maybe I was just tired and overreacting, like it could have been that the AC turned on and moved the blinds a bit. I was about to walk down the hall to my room and just double check it was clear, when I realized Milo was staying beside the entrance door. I looked back at him and he was staring down the hallway and began to growl. It was a low, quiet growl that I've never heard him do before. I said his name, but he didn't even look at me. His attention was fixed on the hallway. I followed his eyes back down the hall, and only then did I start to see something at the end. In the pitch black, there was the slightest outline of someone standing there. The only thing I could clearly make out were their open eyes staring right into mine. My body jerked back and I instantly fled out the door. I ran to the front of the building and stood outside with Milo as I called the cops and waited for them. My heart didn't slow down until the police arrived. They went in and came out holding a guy in cuffs. The creep didn't even run away. Apparently he had moved into hiding into my bedroom when they found him though. He was middle aged and looked sickly. He refused to speak on why he was there. I think what still gets me about the situation though, is thinking about when he entered my apartment. I took Milo out once when I got home and once before bed, and those were the only two times that I had the door left unlocked. I only saw him in the window before bed, but there's no saying if that was the time that he initially snuck in. He could have been inside my apartment for upwards of 6 hours, hiding in my bedroom. Whatever the case, I was lucky to have Milo watching out for me that night, because it could have ended a lot worse if I didn't. I was camping with a friend of mine in rural Washington. I'll call him Chase. We were way out at a camping spot that we found on an app. It was the middle of fall, so it was pretty cold, but there's just no other time of the year that the forests look this good. The spot was empty too, it was just Chase and I, which made for a relaxing time for us to catch up with each other. The first night we spent there went well. It got a little chilly while sleeping, but it was manageable. In the morning, we hiked up to a small nearby peak that had an overlook. The hike took us around 3 hours, so we got back to our campsites at about noon. When we did, there was someone else there. He was standing near Chase's tent and kind of just looking at it. Chase called out and said hello as we walked up. The guy turned and looked at us, clearly a bit startled for some reason, and instead of saying something, he just hurried away. If it wasn't already strange, it definitely was now. We both immediately went to our tents and checked if all our gear was still there and if anything had been messed with, but neither of us found anything. Maybe we got there before he was able to take anything, but still, it was really odd. We couldn't see any other reason for him to be here if he wasn't camping. We weren't really nervous though. Both of us assumed that there was no chance the guy would come back. I mean, he looked terrified when he saw us. However, we still played it safe and didn't want to leave our tents again, 
so we stayed in the area for the rest of the day. We had a few beers and just talked. When the sun went down, we built up a campfire and made some s'mores. We enjoyed our time around the fire for a couple of hours. In the middle of one of our talks though, Chase had to take a leak, so he got up and went a little ways into the woods. I sat back, but only a few seconds later, he came walking quickly into the campsite. You have trouble out there, I joked. There was someone there. I could immediately see on his face that he was clearly unnerved. Quickly dropping my joking attitude, I stood up and asked exactly what he saw, but Chase said he couldn't really see anything other than the outline of the man. He said he wasn't very far though and was definitely looking at him. This really freaked us out. They could have been watching us this whole time and probably still were right now. Both of us went into our backpacks and got flashlights, but now he was gone. We went back to the campfire, but stayed on watch, checking the woods around us with our flashlights. Chase seemed to be sure that it was the same person we saw at our camp earlier, so why the hell did he come back? Both of us were pretty on edge. We discussed if maybe we should leave. Even though it was dark out, maybe it was safer just to get out of there. Chase brought up the fact that if the man wanted to rob us, he would have done it earlier when we were gone, and he definitely would not have come back. So he thinks the man was up to something worse. We stashed everything in our backpacks, then stomped out the fire and started back down the trail. For the first few minutes, we tried to hurry to gain some distance in case he was following us. On the whole walk back, we never caught sight of him. We thought we were in the clear, but when we made it up to the trailhead and to my car, all the tires had been slashed. My heart sank as this basically confirmed that the man was probably planning to never let us leave. We were only just able to process the situation before we heard leaves crunching on the trail behind us. We jumped in my car and drove away without hesitation. I was able to get us out of the woods and onto the main road, destroying my wheels in the process. From there, we called a tow truck and the police. They tried to search for fingerprints on the car to identify the man with, but he didn't even try to break inside it or even open the doors. He just slashed the tires. His intentions are still unknown but I'm sure we can all assume the few disturbing likely outcomes that he had planned for that night. It was late fall. I always look forward to this time of year because of the nice weather. Halloween was also one of my favorite holidays, given all the horror movies to watch and fun decorations to put up. This was the day after Halloween though. I had the day off of work, but I was pretty exhausted from a party I went to last night, so today I just wanted to relax and get a few things done around the house. My plan didn't exactly go as planned though. I laid down for a nap around 2 o'clock and never set an alarm. It wasn't until there was a ring at my doorbell that I woke up. I groggily opened my eyes and looked at my phone. It was 9 p.m. I immediately sat up, frustrated at myself for wasting the whole day napping, but I was quickly interrupted by the doorbell again. I got out of bed and put a sweatshirt on, then walked downstairs and up to the door. Looking out the peephole, I didn't see anything, so I opened the door. No one was out there. I did answer the door really late, so I thought they probably just walked away. However, just as I was closing the door, I saw someone. They were standing just 20 yards away, near a tree in my front yard, and they had a mask on. Like one of those generic ones you could get at any Halloween shop. They were looking right at me though. I thought it was just a kid playing a prank, so I just closed the door. I went to the bathroom and splashed some water on my face to wake myself up. 
then headed to the kitchen to do some dishes and clean up. I was in there for probably around 10 minutes when I heard someone's voice. It was very muffled and from somewhere outside. I turned around and looked at the back door and just barely, I could see someone walking in my backyard. It looked like they were just passing through until they started coming back around toward my house. They were walking just outside the reach of my back porch light, kind of like they were trying not to be seen. From what I could see though, it looked like they were alone, so I wasn't sure why I'd heard someone talking. Once they got closer, I heard their footsteps walk along the side of my house. I tried to follow the sound, but suddenly lost them. It was quiet, no voices or footsteps. As I stood there and listened intently, I began turning my head in different directions, just trying to catch any sound I could. But when I looked back toward the back door, someone was staring right at me. My whole body froze. They were wearing that same Halloween mask, but it was someone else. This person was noticeably bigger and taller than the other one. What the hell are you guys doing? I yelled hoping that if it was kids, then maybe they'd be intimidated easily. But it definitely didn't work. They moved away from the door and around the opposite side of the house. Just as I was going to follow them, I heard a crack behind me, followed by footsteps sprinting away. Right where I heard the sound from, there was a window, and when I lifted the blinds, I could clearly see the outer part of the wooden window seal had been split off. They were clearly trying to break it open quietly while I was distracted by the other person at the back door. Once they blew their cover, they ran. And after quickly figuring all of this out, I ran upstairs and called 911. I wasn't sure if they'd fully given up yet, but knowing they were trying to break in with me inside, I wasn't taking any chances on what they may or may not do. They didn't seem to try anything else though. Cops showed up and took down my report, but even to this day, there hasn't been anything else on what happened. With Halloween coming up pretty soon this year, I'm definitely a little nervous about a possible second attempt. I'll update if anything happens. Four years ago, in late October, I picked up a new job at a gas station. My friends were throwing a big Halloween party on the 31st, but because of when I got hired, I didn't have any vacation time, so unfortunately, I had to work that night. At least I had most of the day to hand out candy and watch some movies, though. I went into work at 8. The streets were pretty quiet, at least of cars, since kids were running around trick-or-treating so I hoped the gas station wouldn't be busy. Thankfully, I got what I wished for. Only a couple dozen cars came in my first hour, and once it got closer to 10, even less were coming by. Even the roads weren't busy. I kept seeing a police car patrolling the road every 15 minutes, but aside from that, it was dead outside. I was fine with it being slow, but scrolling through my phone and seeing everyone else having fun on Halloween night was a little depressing, so I grabbed some boxes from the back of stuff to refill on the shelves. Another little while passed, and as my back was to the front door, I heard the little bell go off. I turned around and saw three men walking into the shop. They were all wearing Halloween costumes, like full costumes with masks and everything. One of them was dressed up as Michael Myers, but the other two I didn't recognize, probably some other typical Halloween characters. I could tell immediately they weren't kids though, they were grown adults. One of them even had a long beard sticking out from under the mask and had tattoos going up his neck. I greeted them, but aside from a quick glance, they didn't acknowledge me. Maybe they were just trying to be in character or something, I don't know but it was already weird that they kept the masks on. I left the aisle and went around to the checkout counter while I waited for them to grab what they needed. 
I noticed there weren't any cars outside though, which explained why I didn't hear them pull in. I watched them look around for a minute at the candy aisle. Then they picked up a bag of Dum Dum lollipops and tossed them on the counter. Find everything you needed? They didn't say anything. I rang it up and told them the total. They paid in cash. As I was doing the transaction though, I couldn't help but notice one of them in the back staring at me. Through the mask, I could only see his eyes, but they were locked on me and looked frustrated or angry or something. It made me really uncomfortable. I finished up and told them to have a good night. There was a pause though, before one of the men walked up to the front door and pulled down the bolt lock. My stomach dropped. The one that was staring at me then immediately came around the counter and shoved me onto the ground. I tried to stay calm and told them to take the money and that I wouldn't stop them. However, the other man walked around the counter and right past the register. They weren't here for the money. He forced zip ties around my hands and lifted me onto my feet. I was completely helpless as they dragged me through the store and after briefly checking outside, they rushed me out the entrance. It was only as they dragged me toward the side of the building that I noticed an old car sitting in the grass outside the parking lot. As we reached the edge of the parking lot though, a sudden glaring light came over top us. It was a police car pulling into the lot. The three men dropped me on the pavement and sprinted into their car. I don't know if it just was that their car wouldn't start, or they gave up, or what, but the officers were able to get them before they got away. Backup showed up not even 30 seconds later. I guess what happened was earlier in the night, the police got a report of three men in costumes offering kids candy on the sidewalks and trying to lead them away from houses. That's why I kept seeing a patrol car circling the area. What they wanted to do with me, or any of the kids, isn't for sure, as none of the men confessed anything. It almost makes me glad that everything happened the way it did though, because if I'd sold them that candy and heard later on that it was used to kidnap kids with, I probably would have felt a ton of guilt. Thankfully, it didn't have to go that way. My grandparents live in a small cabin up in Alaska, so I don't see them very often, but last fall I made the road trip up there in my RV just to visit them for the season. A bunch of other family members flew in as well. As we got into October though, it started getting colder and the snow was supposed to be coming in, so I had to leave before the roads got too bad. The road that goes from Alaska and through Canada is famous for being extremely remote. There's no service along most of it, and it just goes through hills, valleys, forests, and mountains. Most people making the drive either sleep at the few truck rest stops or at public camping spots along the road. On my second day, I drove until 8 p.m. before finding a place to pull off for the night. It was a dirt road with a small spot between the trees to park and sleep at. I think a lot of people might find it unnerving to sleep in the middle of nowhere like this, but I did it pretty often in my RV, so I was used to it. I made myself something small to eat, then got in bed and turned on a movie to watch. It wasn't very long after I'd arrived though that I heard footsteps nearby. I sat up and opened one of the blinds but I didn't have any exterior lights on, so my view was of nothing but the pitch black woods. The footsteps sounded like they were from out there, but I couldn't confirm if it was a person or not. From what I saw when I pulled into this campsite, this was the only parking spot, but maybe there were more nearby that I didn't see. If it was a person, they had to have parked somewhere nearby because there's no way they could have just been wandering around all the way out here. I thought about heading to the front of the RV and turning on the lights, but figured it best to just lay low. 
Maybe they didn't even see me here and were just walking back to their campsite. Or again, it might have not even been a person at all. After a few minutes, everything seemed good and I continued watching the movie. I went to bed around 9.30, knowing I had to get up early to start driving again tomorrow. My eyes shot open to three loud knocks at the door to the RV. It was nearly too dark to see inside, so I switched on the reading light next to me. I just need some water, please, and then I'll be on my way. It was a man's voice, deep, like they were older. My eyes looked at the clock. It was 2 a.m. If this guy really was out there, in need of help, he had way more to worry about than just water. It had to be nearly freezing out at this time of night. Why are you out here? How did you even get here? I called out. There was a pause. My truck broke down, just a couple miles back. Just looking for some help is all. I don't mean any trouble. My gut feeling was that this wasn't right. Everything just wasn't adding up. I snuck my way over to the other side window and tried to peek out and see him. It was extremely dark, but I could make out his figure standing right up to the door. I thought it was really weird how close he was, like he might be trying to listen in or even try to break in. But then I caught sight of something else. Behind him, I could see more figures moving around in the dark, several, like at least four or five. The man knocked again, almost banging on the door as if he was losing his patience. I quietly backed up and grabbed the keys, then took a deep breath before running to the front and quickly turning the RV on. As soon as I did, the headlights lit up multiple men in front of me all looking mid-thirties and forties with scruffy beards and raggy winter clothes. They started yelling as I drove past them and circled back to the main road. I drove until I reached a gas station. By the time I had service and got police involved, it was far too late for anything to be done. What those men were trying to do is anyone's best guess. This fall, I didn't make the trip up there and I'm starting to doubt I ever will again. It was mid-November. Winter had just started coming in, and snow had already begun covering most of our small town. I lived alone in a very small two-bedroom home that had an unfinished basement. The only time I went down there was to do laundry or get something out of storage. It was a Friday night, and it had been snowing a decent amount during my drive home from work. I had the next two days off though, so I was happy to get home and hunger down for the weekend. I got home at 7. I made dinner and watched the new episode of my show, then turned on YouTube in the background as I laid on the couch and scrolled on my phone. The snow must have picked up, as I could hear the wind slamming against the house and making the walls creak. Sometime around 10, I got up to use the restroom, but as I walked down the hallway, I heard something below me. I immediately stopped, hoping to recognize it as just the house creaking, but it wasn't. There was something moving around in the basement. I didn't know how that could be possible. I went over to the basement door and opened it, turning on the lights and walking down to the bottom. There were only a couple hanging light bulbs across the ceiling to light up the large open area. I didn't see much of anything though. I stood there for a minute just to see if that sound came again, but after hearing nothing else, I went back upstairs. Given the conditions outside, I figured it had to just be the house moving around. I used the restroom and went back to the couch. However, only a minute later, I heard it again. This time it was more clear. It wasn't a creaking sound. It was subtle thumps, like almost identical to what it would sound like if someone was walking around. 
I could feel my heart beat faster, but I still felt like there was no way someone could be down there. It just wouldn't be possible. I got up again and went up to the basement door. Now that I was there, I couldn't hear it. I walked down to the bottom. The sound of the wind was loud down there, so I wasn't able to hear anything over the low groan of the house. But on the cement floors, there were shoe prints. They were fresh, too, only showing because of the dusty layer that covered the floor. I was absolutely terrified. I ran back upstairs and grabbed the house phone to dial 911. As I told the operator all the necessary information, there were two very loud thuds from the basement. After that, I sprinted out of the house. A couple officers showed up a reasonable time later, and when they went inside, they didn't find anything aside from the prints on the floor. Strangely, they seemed to lead right up to the bottom of the basement steps and nowhere else. They really didn't know what to tell me other than the call if anything else happens. I booked a hotel for the next two nights, as I was too uneasy to sleep in my own home. With no signs of a break-in anywhere, it's really hard to say who was in my basement, or even how they got in or out. Part of me thinks it might have not even been a person at all, though I'm still really skeptical. I just hope that whoever or whatever it was doesn't come back. This was way back in 2014. I was in 6th grade and had a small group of friends that I was going trick-or-treating with on Halloween. Now, every time before this, one of our parents always felt the need to tag along, which never let us have the full experience, knowing we were being watched and had to behave. But this year, we were free to do as we please, so we wanted to make the best of it. It was me and my friends Johnny, Colton, and Wes. After school on Halloween day, we all got into our costumes and met up at Colton's place, then started making our rounds. Honestly, I don't think any of us thought it would take so long to go through Colton's neighborhood. Most of the houses had good stuff though, even full-sized candy bars at some of them. It was about 8 o'clock when we made it to the other neighborhood. None of us had ever really been there but it had even bigger houses that we knew had to have the best candy. It was pretty dark out now, and these houses were more covered by trees, so it probably wasn't a good idea to go there. But of course, we still did. We went down the street, stopping at 10 or so houses, when we went up to the last one on the block. This one was noticeably more spread out, further from the other houses, and it looked older, like it was probably there before all the other houses were built around it. Johnny wanted to skip it and turn the corner to the next block, as he thought there was something off about it, but the rest of us didn't listen. We walked up to the porch and rang the doorbell. They had a few carved pumpkins on their doorstep, so we thought they probably had stuff to hand out, but we waited for a good 30 seconds and didn't hear anything inside. So we started to walk off the porch, when we suddenly noticed a person by the garage. He was walking toward us. He was an older guy, maybe 50, and he had a big smile. If you'll wait just a minute, I can get y'all some candy. I just picked up more from the store. We never saw him pull in though, and he kind of seemed to come out of nowhere. We said it was okay, and that maybe we'll come back around. His smile fell flat as we walked away. All of us felt a little weird after that, so we moved on to the next block. There was something about that guy that was just creepy. All of us felt it too, which made us feel like there might have actually been something wrong with him. We went up to a few more houses though, but it was starting to get really dark out, and we decided to head back to Colton's place to spend the rest of the night there. Instead of going back the way we came, we turned down the next street that was in the direction of the main road. This one only had a couple houses on it, and the rest was just forest. There weren't even many lights on the road. 
I think all of us were a little uneasy walking down there, as most of us had even stopped talking. Then, out of nowhere, there were footsteps beside us, coming from the trees. That guy came walking up to us. He had that creepy smile again, and tried waving at us as he made his way through the brush and trees, and onto the road. All of us backed up as he started talking. I didn't even hear what he said before he lunged toward Colton. Somehow he didn't get him, and all of us sprinted away before anything else could happen. We didn't stop running until we got to the main road. We crossed back into Colton's neighborhood and felt way more safe, so we caught our breath and started walking again. The walk back to his place was only 10 minutes, but around halfway there, an old gray sedan with tinted windows started passing by us. The first time we barely noticed, but they circled around two more times, slowing down each time they passed us. We picked up the pace and got back inside Colton's house. None of us really knew what to do after that point. Stupidly, we chose not to tell anyone because we thought they would have never let us out alone anymore. We never saw that guy again though. What he would have done is unknown. I was staying at a cabin for the weekend. It was in a campground an hour from where I lived. Being that I lived in the heart of the city, I always liked to go stay out in the forest for a few days during fall so I could enjoy the nice weather and colorful trees. This wasn't a fancy campground. It was only 10 bucks a night, and the cabins were only 200 square feet. Basically one small room with a bed in the middle. The first day I was there, I spent most of my time outside. There were a few small trails I went on. The second day, I sat outside in a lawn chair that was set up behind the cabin. The leaves blowing in the wind was such a nice sound to listen to that I could have sat out there forever. I don't know how long I actually sat out there for, maybe three or four hours. At some point though, I spotted a person out in the woods. They were far out, like 150 yards from me, and were just standing between the trees, not moving at all. From what I could tell, it looked like he was looking right at me. I wasn't sure though, so I just stayed there and waited for a few minutes. After that, I started getting creeped out, being unable to tell if he was looking at me or not. I went back inside and stayed in until sunset. The wind got louder and more hectic after the sun went down. Inside the cabin, it was really loud, especially with the windows not being properly sealed. The wind was making that high-pitched swooshing sound all night. Normally I wouldn't mind, but I think it made me nervous because I knew I wouldn't be able to hear the leaves crunch if someone was approaching my cabin. Seeing that guy earlier just put me in an uneasy mood. I lit up the fireplace though and sat on the sofa chair trying to wind myself down for the night. An hour or so passed before there was a sudden knock at the front door. I jumped up from my chair, being fully startled by it. After a few seconds, they knocked again. I could feel my heart racing. It had to be almost 9pm by now, so someone knocking at my cabin in the woods was extremely unsettling. I didn't know if I should say something, or stay quiet. I ended up staying quiet, just out of hesitation, but they continued to knock, until the knocks became hits. Over and over, it started sounding like they might actually break down the door. Then it stopped. There was a whole long minute of silence, as I stood and waited for whatever the hell was going to happen next. Wondering if they left, I moved up to the door as quietly as I could and looked out the peephole. There was nobody outside. I felt a slight bit of relief. I looked for another 30 seconds, just to be sure. Then I backed up and turned to get my phone, only to see a pair of eyes piercing into mine through one of the old windows. 
As soon as we made eye contact, his head moved out of sight. Then it was quiet again. The wind blowing around made it a hundred times more eerie. I got my phone and called the police. I didn't want to risk running out to my car that was parked across the yard, so I stayed inside and waited for the police to show up. Whoever was outside my cabin must have left, as police made it and found no one. I still don't know what really happened at that cabin, but I've never gone back since.